Hopefully you've had a chance to try this practice problem. It's building molecular orbital diagrams for four different molecules. I'm gonna walk through the solutions for these now. So if you haven't tried them, just pause the video and give it a shot first. So I'm gonna start with B2. Um, and so I'm gonna build my MO diagram kind of from scratch rather than just memorizing the MO. Um, and so I've got my energy scale. And what I'm gonna do is first build the uh, atomic orbitals for boron. So boron is in my second row. It has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 3p1. I'm sorry, 2p1. <laughs> So when I'm building this, I'm just looking at the valence electrons. So I'm gonna put in my P orbitals and my S orbitals. So 2S and 2P. Now I'm gonna do this for two boron atoms because I have that subscript two. And I'm gonna put them at the same level because it's the same element. So they have the same electronegativity. So they'll have the same relative energies. And so now once I'm at this point, I can start crafting my um, MO diagram. I'm actually going to go ahead and put in my atomic orbital electron based on my um, electron configuration. All right. So first I'm going to combine my two S atomic orbitals into my sigma and sigma star. So I'm going to come down a little bit lower than both of these. And first I make my bonding orbital. That's a sigma because of the style, like the that these will be two S atomic orbitals overlapping. And I'll have a sigma star antibonding orbital. Next, I'll do my P orbitals. Now, boron is to the left of nitrogen oxygen. So that means it's gonna follow the same rules as nitrogen for that placement of the sigma versus the pi orbitals. So that means that my pi orbitals are actually gonna be lower in energy then my sigma, so these are my pi bonding orbitals, and then comes my sigma orbitals, my sigma bonding. And then I need to have my counterparts for anti-bonding. Now it's not gonna be a perfect mirror like it was below, because remember those pi orbitals have had their energy brought down, um, or sorry, the sigma one has been brought up. And so I'm gonna have my pi go next, and these are my pi anti-bonding orbitals, and then my sigma, anti-bonding is all the way at the top. And so now I can come through and place my valence or my valence electrons in my molecular orbitals. So I've got uh, one, two, three on each. So a total of six, I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's my MO diagram. Now I can extract quite a bit of information from this, right? So I have unpaired electrons, therefore I have a paramagnetic compound. My bond order for B2, let's see, let's do it here, bond order, is going to be equal to my bonding minus my anti-bonding. So I've got one, two, three, and four bonding, and I have just two anti-bonding. So let's color code these. And I always divide that by two. So that's going to give me a bond order equal to one. So this will form one single bond essentially between these two boron atoms. Let's look at carbon now when I bring two carbon atoms together. Uh, so carbon again is gonna be to the left of that nitrogen and oxygen. So I'm gonna just make a note. So it'll follow nitrogen's rules. It has an electron configuration that is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So here's my energy level. And I'm gonna go ahead and put just my valence electrons, which are those 2s and 2p. And it's two carbon atoms, so they're gonna be the same in terms of energy level. So I can come in with my 2p and I'll have my 2s. And now I'll build my molecular orbitals. Um, so first I'm gonna to bring together my bonding sigma orbitals from the overlap of my two S orbitals, sigma. And I'm gonna to bring together 
my anti-bonding sigma for my two atomic orbitals coming together. If I want, I can put subscripts like sigma 2s and sigma star 2s to track that these were built from combining the atomic orbitals from the 2s orbitals from each atom. Now I'm going to do my p orbitals. And again, remember, I'm going to follow the rules for nitrogen. So that means pi will be lower than sigma. And so I'm going to bring this down and I'll have my two pi orbitals. And these are bonding molecular orbitals. Uh, and these are coming from the 2p. And then I'm going to have my sigma bonding. And again, these are 2p if you want the subscript. And then uh, coming up, I'm going to come up to my pi, because remember that sigma has artificially been brought up. Uh, normally it would be lower than those two pi's um, if it was perfectly symmetrical and it's not in this case. So I've got my pi star 2p. And at the very top, I have my sigma star antibonding from the 2p. So uh, in terms of my electrons, I have uh, for carbon four, so one, two, three, four, for each of my atomic orbitals. So that's gonna give me a total of eight valence electrons to work with. So for C2, I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. So I half fill and then I finish filling all the way. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now in this case, I have a diamagnetic compound. There are no unpaired electrons. So I don't expect this to be super interesting in the presence of a magnet. Now my bond order, again, is gonna be equal to my bonding electron. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, minus my anti-bonding ones of which I have two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and divide that by two as I do for my bonding order for everything. And that's gonna be four over two or a bond order of two. So bringing these two carbon atoms together, I'm going to form a double bond essentially between the two. And they, because it's not zero, they will form a covalent bond together. All right, let's focus on neon now. So neon is to the left of that oxygen nitrogen divide. So it's gonna follow the same pattern as oxygen. And its electron uh, configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So I'm just gonna focus on those valence electrons. I'm gonna build my energy diagram. I'll put my two neon atomic orbitals in first. So I'm just worrying about the 2p and the 2s because I'm just thinking about my valence electrons and I'm using the same atom for each of these. So I don't have to worry about an energy difference. So now bringing these together to think about what happens when neon two tries to form, I'll have an anti-bonding or sorry, a bonding sigma orbital coming from my combination of my 2s and a sigma anti-bonding as well. Now, because this is going to follow the same pattern as oxygen, that means that my sigma will be lower in energy than my pi for my p orbital contribution. So I'm going to bring down a sigma bonding orbital followed by a pi bonding orbital. And now I'll do the counter of this. I'll make my anti-bonding orbitals with pi anti-bonding followed by sigma anti-bonding at the very top. So now neon has eight valence electrons. It's a noble gas. So it has filled electrons on these atomic orbitals, which means I've got eight on each. So I have a total of 16 electrons. I'll put it up here. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So right off the bat, I don't see any unpaired electrons. So this is diamagnetic. And when I look at my bond order, when I count up my um, bonding electrons, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm gonna subtract my anti-bonding electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. and divide by two, 
for a zero. So no bond forms.